started in the country in Beach City, where there's no beach and there's no city. But there certainly wasn't any art. And I didn't discover art until in my going into my high school year, World War II had just started. And if you enlisted, you got out of your senior year. And I was bored to death in high school. And I figured, man, nothing could be worse than high school. How wrong I was, man, <laughs> oh boy. Still no art. So the Army then decided they needed bodies and threw us all in the infantry, which was the ultimate shock. And it made high school seem cool, man. <laughs> but long story short, I got uh, wounded in training for AnFib training to go to the South Pacific. And they sent me back to California. And there was a painter from Canada, and he was painting out the windows. And the Red Cross supplied him with anything he needed. But the painter, I can't remember his name, and I, we got the guys that could stand to stand and model. And I remember I drew them, but I never drew heads way too complicated and didn't do hands yet. They were way too complicated and just mainly did torsos and loved it. And I remember uh, writing my father. There were no cell phones, of course. Nobody, you wrote if you wanted to communicate and told him that I think I found it. I think I found what I want to do because it just turned me on. It was just something that you <clears throat> lost time in, just the same as I feel about it today. And I said, I think this is it. When I get out of here, I'm going to go to art school. And he wrote back and said, you're probably being medicated. We'll talk later, <laughs> man. So I started going to art schools, not to enroll. I just could go and hang out. And they didn't know one of us from the other. We all looked alike to them. And the art worked beautifully. And it's been the rest of my life. It's been the story. But I didn't realize that I only did women. I've got a photo of the first piece I did in 1940, probably 5, 46. 46 it would have been. And it was a woman. And from that point on, they were all women. And it wasn't until I got in Time Magazine that they sent a reporter out here, and we spent three days with him asking me every day, why women? And I gave him smart-ass answers at first. Of course, why women? You know, dude, look at him, man. I mean, give me a break. And <laughs> then we got serious about it and got Jungian and Freudian and whateverian. And... Uh, I just realized that to me, women are my power model. I just think women, they've, every woman in my life has left me with some gift. I started doing rather, you know, in the beginning, naturalistic heads because I wanted to learn what the human form is about. Did a lot of life drawing and modeling. And then I met a sculptor named Nadelman became intrigued with the way he simplified the head, no mouth, no eyes, and I did that, but I still had the egg shape. And over 60 years, I have compressed that and stylized it and metamorphized it so that that head, which I feel so good about because if I had died younger, it never would have happened, but I got to live long enough that I found my iconic head. And when you inhabit a certain image, like all artists do this, they grab something and they make it theirs. Musicians do it, poets do it, everybody does it. It becomes their language, their image. And so that head is me. That's the head I've developed over a half a century. And it's not to say that it won't metamorphize some more. If I live to be 100, look out, man. <laughs> I got into that head style and it, it stuck. And you can sort of see how it goes into the next stage. When I push that down a little more, it would be icon with a few modifications. <laughs> the first big commission I got in New York was uh, through Donald Trump. Actually, it was through Dan Galbraith here in Ohio, whose father built the OUN and I knew the family and they collected me. And when he was building the Trump Hotel and Tower for which they 
use Donald's name because Galbraith Tower just doesn't have a ring to it. <laughs> At any rate, <clears throat> that piece and Larry Silverstein from Twin Towers has collected me for decades and he told me you're going to, you're moving to the hottest spot in New York. Time Warner wasn't there then. I mean, he knew being Mr. New York what was coming. And it's come. And the one in Trump Tower was first done in clay, three months working up the model, and then the mold, then the wax, then the bronze. Well now, with the three-dimensional CAD machine, and the new technique, I can make the model, as I always have done, but then I had to blow it up myself, which was a time-consuming process, and months at least. Now I send the model to them, they computerize it, the machine uh, gives me whatever size I want in foam that's then sent to the foundry, then the process is the same. The mold is made, the wax is made, the bronze is made, and it's still a time-consuming process. And this latest one that's in uh, on 57th Street, which is what they now call Billionaire's Row, is uh, one of the best ones I've done, and I love it. I always say that about my last one, my wife says. <laughs> but it's, uh, Gives me a lot of pleasure at 86 to have a new piece unveiled. Icon, that's the <clears throat> first one that I've used powder coat on. And uh, I don't have any track record with it and I just hope the hell it works. <laughs> I've used automobile finish, Ferrari, BMW, and that's worked fine. So this is a new departure. And the light color is a new departure, too. I was going to ask, why white on this one? Well, you know, artists steal from other artists, man. If you're going to steal, steal from somebody that's, you know, worth stealing from. <laughs> and an Asian artist whose name I can't re pronounce had the piece in Union Square this summer. It was uh, a woman's face that was compressed, but very naturalistic other than very thin. And it was all done in white. And it, I never would have thought that would have worked in a garden setting with trees like mine is. But it, it's perfect. It's just, you really can focus on it. And the hourglass figure, they have uh, sociologists, biologists, they all the ologists that figure out is pre-sold. The male eye goes to the hourglass figure because in primitive times, as today, it still does in the snake brain and everything that, to me, that really is significant happens in the snake brain and then it comes to pre-funnel and we screw around with it and intellectualize it and create some form of myth. But the impulse is in the snake brain and that hourglass means good mama. I mean, wide hips, good mothering, you know, birthing and etc. And so that is the image that it stands on, is the hourglass feminine form. The joy to me in art and music is the process. And if you're not part of the process, you're not part of it. And uh, to me, uh, the, that airline thing, getting there is, you know, X amount of the fun. It's damn near all the fun. Because once you're there, then you're looking at the next thing. So getting there is pretty much all the fun. It's been a wonderful trip. I've been uh, blessed with a lot of recognition. Some of it deserved, I hope. <laughs> and it's all been based on, uh, I chose a very good subject, women. I mean, how can you lose with women? It's your subject. <laughs>